I'm Jason Lake, and uh, I work at Mazona, a division of OSNA. Uh, I grew up in the Phoenix area. I went to undergrad and med school at University of Arizona. I then did my residency in Memphis at the Campbell Clinic, and I followed that with a foot and ankle fellowship at the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. Yet this is probably the most common question I get when I talk with primary care providers and new patients is, is folks ask me what the difference in training is between an orthopedic surgeon specializing in foot and ankle and a podiatrist. After podiatry and medical school, um, both uh, physicians do residency type programs and so a residency is extra training after school. Podiatrists do two or three years depending on their residency of training after podiatry school prior to working on their own. Orthopedic surgeons do five years of residency and followed with a fellowship uh, specializing with additional uh, training in foot and ankle. Um, but the bulk of the residency includes foot and ankle as well as all the other parts of the body uh, because the thought is is that it all functions as a whole. Of course there is overlap between my practice and that of a podiatrist. I mean, both of us see toes, both of us see problems such as bunions, uh, and then after that the practice has changed somewhat. I think that podiatry practices tend to have more office brace procedures such as toenail trimming, uh, addressing toenail infections, uh, fungal infections, as well as uh, wounds and diabetic sores. They use uh, ultrasound and lasers and different sort of office-based procedures in addition to performing surgery. My practice differs from a general orthopedic surgeon in that the vast majority of my practice uh, is ankle and foot disorders, and so I end up doing uh, more procedures uh, of the uh, same type and more complex procedures than the general orthopedic surgeon. So. Uh, someone may end up doing five of one thing and I may do 50 in the same year and uh, my choice in doing that is that hopefully I can be more efficient and have better outcomes if I do 50 instead of five. So uh, there's always a little bit of confusion I think when patients uh, come to see an orthopedic surgeon uh, by definition uh, they think an orthopedic surgeon is someone who treats people surgically and that's actually not the case. Of all the surgical specialties, orthopedics has a very high percentage of non-operative treatment. And so every patient who sees me uh, initially always gets non-operative treatment. Uh, it's only when non-operative treatment fails, such as bracing, injections, medications, and therapy, uh, do I even offer patient surgery outside of a major trauma. There are only a few guys in the city performing ankle replacements, and uh, and I think the reason is one, it's a technology that's been around for a while, um, and years ago had poor results, uh, but with newer prostheses, the results are improving, and so um, people are a little slow to pick up the procedure because it had uh, poor outcomes in the past. The other reason is that. There's only about 4,500 ankle replacements done a year in the whole country, which is dwarfed by the number of hip and knee replacements. And so uh, there's always only going to be a few guys in every city or girls performing ankle replacements just because there aren't that many patients that need them. So candidates for ankle replacement are those patients with end-stage ankle arthritis, i.e. bone rubbing on bone. Uh, these patients had to have failed uh, conservative treatment including uh, medications, injections, activity modifications, and braces. And when all of the conservative treatment fails, some patients are candidates for ankle replacements. These patients usually have good ankle motion. They're usually over 60. They usually have a low body mass index. And they have very few other medical problems. Prior to ankle replacement, really the only option for advanced ankle arthritis that failed conservative treatment was ankle fusion. Ankle fusion involves fusing the two ankle bones together so they no longer move, which definitely decreases pain. However, it's at the expense of losing motion. Yeah, a lot of people ask why we only do it in older patients, and the reason is is because the newer ankle replacements that we're using currently 
have good literature to about 10 years out. And so we know the longevity of the implants after about 10 years. Because we don't know what happens to them after that, you have to be careful putting them in younger patients because the, the worry is that they may wear out. And so the older the patient, the more likely they are to have the same implant for the rest of their life.